Hi. I want to do something a little different in this video, um, but first of all, before we get running um, on this, let me say thank you um, to those couple of people uh, that donated on the last video. Say couple, it was one. It's always one for some reason, don't ask me why. Uh, we always seem to get at least uh, one person support the channel, and that's good enough for me. You know, like I said many times before, you know, it's encouragement. So, um, the other thing was, um, but uh, one or two people said that they've been following uh, the channel for some time, and recently there's been no data. So, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to put some graphs up. I'm not going to talk about them, um, but I will do in the next video, and uh, we'll cover you know pretty much what we've talked about with regards to increasing volcanoes uh, erupting the increasing magnitude of earthquakes and frequency of earthquakes and the migrating pole and the changing climate as well as global temperatures um, sea and uh, mean surface temperatures around the world and we'll try and correlate that um, into you know the pole shift um, and how I believe this is all stemming from, you know, the cause of the magnetic pole uh, affecting all of the, you know, after mentioned. So, like I said, I wanted to talk about a few things different. I'll, I'll try and change um, the graphs as much as I can, so I don't, you know, send people to sleep just staring at one thing. So you can even just listen to me in the background if you want, or you know, you can. Um, you know, pay attention to what I'm saying or, or whatever. It's, it's your your call, guys. Um, occasionally, I do a video like this uh, where I talk about some different things, uh, some scientific related subjects and others as well. That probably, you know, some people might think that they're not so scientific. So, you know, I've given you a heads up of what the rest of this video is going to be about, and it might go on for a little bit. Um, because um, I just think, um, you know, there are two things at play. There are the physical, and uh, there are also, you know, the non-physical. Um, things that we don't know too much about. And I'm going to start off with just hitting the, hitting the ground running, really, with what I'm talking about with regards to, you know, how some people don't seem to think that there's something else going on um, in this world, you know, other than what we see as a physical um, plane, uh, you know, or, or reality. You know, some people say, oh, that's fiction and not reality. Some people would say it's not science, it's reality. But what am I talking about? Okay, let's talk about quantum physics and what they found with the double slit experiment. They found they behaved completely different under observation. This is an electron. It's a fundamental particle, um, smaller than all the atoms. You know, most atoms have orbiting electrons, and you know, it just sets the example for you know smaller things than the electron in in the subatomic um, plane. You know, we could just give you, for instance, what are, what are the subatomic particles? Well, most people know that atoms are made up of neutrons and protons, but you could go smaller and not in the order of, you know, larger to smallest. You'd get um, quarks, leptons, aunts, uncles, flavours of leptons, muons, and so on and so forth. You know, there are many... Uh, smaller subatomic particles that make up atoms, you know, that make up neutrons and proton, protons. So, you know, um, I'm not sure where the Higgs boson fits into this, or, you know, as is commonly known, the God particle. But I find it very interesting that Higgs named it the God particle. And it's for that reason I mentioned, you know, when we started talking about particles. Um, why I feel it very 
um, coincidental. He did call it the God Particle. Now just think about this. Under observation, the subatomic particles, at, at least the one in the experiment that was repeated and found to be the same, behaved differently just because it was observed. Think about that, guys. If our world is built up of these subatomic particles, how are they all interacting just through the fact that we observe them? How can the fact that we just observe something change its behaviour? It really does make you wonder, you know, what we class as reality. Uh, is it really reality when, you know, if only by observation it changes? You know, it gives you a different outlook on life. That's one thing. Uh, I wanted to just talk about, you know, because, you know, we could, we could continue down that road of saying then, you know, well, what, what, what else is going on? And, and this is really uncharted territory. Um, I know that, um, quantum physics did, uh, arrive at this, you know, well-known phenomena that when particles are observed, they behave differently. But what else is going on? You know, why didn't they go any further into this? And, uh, you know, I've heard scientists, doctors and professors talk about this quantum physics in, in further detail. And they've said, look, it gets even worse than this. You know, if we've got a box in front of us and we put a cat in the box and we close the lid and we don't hear the cat and we don't, um, you know, see it moving at all to give us an indication that the cat's there, it's very likely that the cat has disappeared. Yeah, I know. How, how does that, um, you know, ring with you guys? It's it's completely absurd, isn't it? That what, what we're saying here is, you know, scientists are saying is that, you know, as soon as we lose sight of it, the thing completely vanishes. Um, I, I I don't know. Um, that's this is coming from doctors, you know, uh, professors, and all those. But um, you know, I'm I'm one of these people in life that uh, are fascinated by um, unusual things, and you know, I I have given my time to, you know, these unusual things. I mean, we, we covered the Egyptian pyramids and things like that, and we found, um, <coughs> excuse me, some unusual things with relationship to the star constellations and the Winter Triangle and the King and Queen's Chamber, you know, falling on the, um, you know, the galactic equator line. Uh, We've talked about the Sumerians knowing that these outer planets in our solar system, such as Pluto, was a jade green colour, and we didn't even know this until only 30, 40 years ago. It's um, bizarre, some of these things that I've come across. Um, you know, I've mentioned and demonstrated this equation that, you know, I came across called the universe, I've called it since the universal equation where it doesn't really matter what numbers you start with in this equation uh it's like um a machine where you you know you put coins in and they'll only fall out of one of two slots and there is no other slots for it to fall out and in this equation you either get a 9 or a 0 and you know i i thought you know this is binary code but the strange thing is, is that if you start looking into the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio and pi, which we know um, our ancient civilizations were aware of because the buildings um, were not by coincidentally uh, perfectly fitting on, on within the, you know, the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio and pi. Um, you know, it was no coincidence that these buildings were designed by those ratios. So the point is this, if you get these numbers uh, that are in the golden ratio, Fibonacci sequence and pi, and you run them through the universal equation, again, it spits out one of two um, 
numbers and those only two numbers are nines and zeros and uh, I, I've drawn conclusions to this uh, which have you know um, been you know I've said you know the, the, the numbers in the Bible fit these numbers as well uh, such as just off the top of my head 144 uh, you know the 144,000 um, that are made up from the 12 tribes of um, you know, uh, you know, uh, and you know, there's twelve thousand in each tribe. Uh, twelve tiles is one four four, so you know, you mix up the numbers anyhow. Um, there's also one hundred and forty four cubits um, in the descending bride. Uh, there's something there, guys. You know, uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying myself just talking about some of these things lightly. Um, you know, I'd like to talk about them in more detail with you guys because I do think that what is happening is a course of human behavior now, I've said it right so you know there's no going back on that now I do believe that what is happening with the magnetic pole is possibly or very likely connected to human behavior and why do I think that you might you might say well that you know Maybe you're delving a little into pseudoscience for this, but why do I think that? Well, you know, it's perfectly understood that we're part of nature. Um, you know, we're, we're human beings, yes, but we are nevertheless just another species of the already uh, billion or so species on this planet. So, you know, we are part of nature as is any other species on this planet, whether it be any from any biodiversity, it doesn't make no difference. If it's classified as alive, then, you know, it's part of nature. And, you know, even the smallest changes in nature can have uh, larger effects on other parts of nature. So, I'm not just talking about the physical effects that we have on our surroundings that change nature. I'm talking about the behaviour of our species changes, quite possibly, nature itself um, because we are part of it this there's no separation is what I'm saying um, and I believe it's our behavior that's changing nature and that this is something that's probably not very well understood um, I don't even know whether some scientists are looking into this but I can tell you um, one of the reasons what makes me feel, feel this, or you know, it seems to fit my theory in this, is that you know, if you look at some of the things that were said in the Bible, um, you'll see that when certain behaviours um, were apparent, certain um, natural anomalies occurred, such as the floods and other things as well. And it's promised that when a certain behaviour in the future, talking about revelations in the Bible now, um, gets to a certain degree, then, you know, uh, it is said that, you know, uh, man will be destroyed by the earth. You know, you can read that yourself in the Bible. And I think it's interesting that some of our um, ancient accounts uh, with regards to, um, you know, the earth have been recorded in in, in a book and you know I've said before if ever you want something to last the test of time then a good place to place that is in a religion because religions do generally not get changed and usually at some part in the religion there's a warning that if someone changes something in this religion like in the King James Bible if you read at the back you know if you change something in this book then those changes will be added to your life either you know, if you remove things from the book, things will be removed from your life, and so on and so forth. Let's change the uh, background for a minute. So, you know, we're talking about behaviour. And I think most of us are noticing a difference in behaviour. And it's interesting because I've seen uh, someone do a video on YouTube saying that, you know, our brains are electromagnetic. And, you know, the sparks that flicker from, you know, uh, those brain cells or stem cells or motor neurons or whatever they are 
in the brain, um, you know, are affected by other electromagnetic um, fields. So what they were saying is, yes, you know, for the last hundred years, the poles on this planet have been in a transition of reversal or going through that. And they're suggesting that this is having an effect on the human brain. Now, I was talking about us and our behaviour affecting nature. You know, we're part of nature, we affect nature. So, I, I guess what what this person was saying is just the reverse of what I was saying. That maybe our collective electromagnetic frequency changes, um, you know, other electromagnetic fields. And, you know, we could be, even if that theory stands, uh, responsible for the magnetic poles reversing. But just look at our behaviour. You see in this video, this person, this lady was talking about, you know, how it was affecting our brains and as a result of that, you know, our behaviours were changing. And, you know, I think um, it's probably correct. Uh, it could well be correct. Oh, I've noticed a dramatic change. I mean, you know, some of you younger guys out there will think, you know, Gene, maybe you are just getting old. Uh, but it's not the fact of getting old. I mean, I'm, I'm always observing things in my life. And I like to think about them and ponder them, you know, and try and understand, you know, why they are the way they are. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing human behaviour deteriorate and um, I'm thinking we must be approaching this time where, you know, even bigger and greater changes are going to take place. I really do feel that. Um, you know, if you're like myself, you follow the economy, global economies, and you can see that they're in a lot of trouble especially over in the United States, in the UK and Europe. It doesn't matter where in the world. You know, we know what's been going on. Um, there's been some um, extreme corruption taking place. And this Keynesian, I believe it is, system of, um, you know, it, it is having detrimental effects. And at some point... You know, it's it's like it's going to have it's going to have a serious effect where it's not going to be no longer controllable. And you, and you know you know as well as I do what what I'm talking about is the printing up of money, the creating of false wealth, and these governments are distributing it between mainly just a very few people. And, uh, you know, it's not just, it's not just that. It's the corruption on a multitude of scales. And these people that are running world governments are setting examples, setting precedents for the behaviour of other people. And, uh, it's no longer, uh, considered, you know, um, bad behaviour because it's common. And people are saying, you know, I've heard them say it. You know, it's normal. It's what normal people do. Well, you know, I've talked about normality, and normality is just something that a lot of people do. Um, and it can be both good and bad, but it's not being seen as bad. It's just being seen as normal because people just aren't giving it the time of day to think about. This behaviour is not good. And, you know, we class ourselves as intelligent species. And some of us like to think of us ourselves as logical uh, thinkers. But, um, you know, I, I look at what's going on and what's being done by these few people. And it's neither intelligent in my view and it's neither logical. Because if you were a logical thinker and you were intelligent, you would see that what you're doing has a negative outcome. And possibly you know, for your benefit, many will suffer. And for that reason, it's illogical. But 
what we're seeing is is people, you know, be completely illogical, and as a result, I feel irresponsible, you know, and uh, they don't even care about their own actions or the repercussions of those actions, um, whether it be a detriment to themselves or to many others, and it's very sad, and it's becoming more and more rife. And at the same time, um, the places that, you know, used to bang out um, morals and, and, you know, uh, practice good behaviour, sadly people are losing, you know, um, the interest in, in listening to such things. And again, as a result of this, it's probably because of, over the last 40 years, the sudden influx of modern technology and you know there is just that much to do these days for people um, whereas opposed to say 60 years ago there wasn't this is having a massive um, effect on people it's having an effect on the relationships how they you know um, rear their children how they participate in society and so on and so forth, but it's sad because it's it, the technology is not bringing about better behaved people. It's actually um, ruining people. Um, I could give examples, but some people would say, "Oh, you're probably being a little bit um, targeted and critical." So, you know, I won't. But I don't think it's good. Uh, some of this technology and. I don't think it's good uh, that the technology has came about so fast. Let's just talk about communications because let's just, we just concentrate on one area, on relationships. Relationships are breaking down at a massive rate um, at the moment. Uh, marriages don't last anywhere near as, what, as long as what they used to. Um, and I believe the reason for that is is because of the uh, different variations now we've got in communication. Um, whereas before, we never had that amount. Of co- it wasn't so easy to communicate with other people. But it is very easy to communicate with people now. For instance, you can communicate on FaceTime, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Skype. Um, you can text, email, etc. You know the, the amounts. Uh, you can Gmail, you know, there's there's just that many ways you can communicate with people whilst not even leaving your living room, that uh, it's a no wonder, you know, uh, some people find themselves talking to strangers, um, find themselves talking to these strangers more often than they do perhaps their partners, and, you know, before they realise it, they have a relationship with another person just like that. And, um, you know, their marriage breaks down as a result of that eventually. You know, this is something that's not being told. You know, these people don't want uh, the reality of what they do, you know, that own these companies that, you know, promote these different um, forms of communication. They don't give you no warnings like they do on tobacco and drink and drugs and other things like that. But this is a result of technology booming and, um, you know, the full repercussions of it not being completely understood. And this is just one aspect of the fragmented uh, community that we're living in right now. And I was talking about, you know, there used to be places where people would go for a regular top up of morals and um, that would be the church. And again, sadly, you know, they're in decline. You know, in the UK, I know quite a few churches that are no longer being used. These beautiful buildings and, you know, the beauty was inside the buildings as well. On those days, they had service and had congregations in them. And now, sadly, they're not. They're not in there. You know, the numbers dwindled down to, you know, amounts where, you know, when you know, it come down to it, you know, there was probably a service of just two or three people. And I know churches that have just two or three people in their congregations. 
on you know a particular day and um you know you, they must they must know themselves that um it is uh going to become impossible at some point to keep that service going even for those few and it's a shame it's, it's strange because it reminds me of the story of um, Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible where, you know, they was looking for just a few people, a few good people, and they wouldn't destroy it yet. You know, I think it was Job who couldn't find, you know, even a, a few good people in the in the city. So, you know, it's just a sad reflection of, you know, these, these cycles coming back round. And... Um, I have recently thought, you know, I mean, I'm not just picking on these communications um, companies. It, th this is just one aspect I'm talking about. It, it's across the range, and it's rife. It's like an infestation that you know, you know, has beat you, and um, you know, it's you've just got to wait now for the inevitable, you know, the full consumption, and I just feel that at that point, you know, it will be. Um, as described, you know, in the Bible, it will be, you know, the terminal end of everything. And to a lot of people, it isn't going to seem like that. You know, the way they look at their, you know, they might just come on this channel. I mean, you know, how many people right now that started listening to this video will not be listening to it now? Um, you know, they are the sort of people that um, are specifically targeting information. They want the information. They want lots of data, um, and they want to get it and go. Um, you know, I guess what it is I'm trying to say is that uh, people are too caught up in their own lives to even notice what's going on. They can't see um, that even themselves are part of the problem, and well. You know, if, you, if people don't even recognise there's a problem, how, how is this problem ever going to be, you know, uh, fixed? You know, it's going to get to the point where, and it is already, you know, where they'll cut the tree down, despite there being nests in the tree, and, you know, they'll watch it fall. They'll even see the eggs smash in the nests, and it will be so numb to them, they will not even give it a, you know, a moment's thought about what they've done and um, <clears throat> this is what's happening in the world across all the scales you know people don't care about birds nests and eggs in the birds nest and the, you know the, the, the young being killed they don't care about you know when it comes down to money you've seen it yourself guys you know they create wars for profit so that they can generate profit so that they can sell these mechanisms of wars it's big books you know, someone's gonna, someone's gonna make a few quid doing it. And, you know, you've seen it as well as I have. Children, women, you know, and men who are brothers to, you know, people, fathers, uncles. Um, you've seen them in the hospitals and in some cases just through in the streets, dead. <coughs> You know, like rubbish. That's, you know, what I'm talking about. That's the level of complacency that we've we've arrived at, and uh, it, it's across every scale. And um, you know, how is the uh, heroin addict ever going to um, resolve his problems if he doesn't first of all realise that the, the heroin is ruining his life? You know, the drunk or or you know, it could be any habit. But you, I think you get where I'm coming from. If people won't look beyond their own lives and see, you know, this is far from a perfect system that we're in. And, you know, we are making it worse by the day. You know, it's let's just take the UK, you know, for instance. All the services that we had 20 years ago, 30 years ago in this country, are being stripped back to the bare nothing instead of being built upon and improved so you know if you if you understand it 
then you know where it's going. Right now, I've talked about uh, these these things as the gauntlet, and you you know you you get where I'm coming from with the gauntlet. You know, there are many obstacles that you have to go run through to get through the gauntlet to you know either beat the clock at the end or you know win the trophy because you're the only one who went through the gauntlet and didn't uh, stumble on any of the obstacles that was purposely put in your place. Well, we're running the gauntlet at the moment. Humanity is definitely running the gauntlet, and <coughs> we we haven't nowhere near made it to the end. Uh, this could be something that civilizations before us have have failed to go through as well. You know, it could be bad the outcome. Um, there are the the obstacles are going to get worse, and we're creating the obstacles. And I've said this. You know, we're running at full speed. And we trip on one obstacle, and because the gauntlet has decided to throw up more than one obstacle and put them in concession, you know, very close to each other, we're going to trip up on the one, we're going to be knocked off our feet by the next, and the third one will probably run straight over us, ending it. And what am I talking about here? Well, if you read the news, you can see that we're in financial trouble globally and it is going to be the next crash is going to be like nothing ever seen on this earth nothing that has ever been recorded America is in so many hundreds of millions of pounds of well trillions of pounds of debt in derivatives all these big companies Goldman Sachs JP Morgan etc etc all have masses amounts of derivatives and you know you just can't write them off because at some point, they've printed, somebody's printed up money and spent that money and actually brought things with that money. And it's stealing. And uh, it came from the top. It came from the world governments. It came directly. The behaviour came straight out of those people we thought and put in trust to run the place decently uh, were the ones that were, you know, uh, allowing the printing presses to run and obviously there's been uh, and you know this guys there's been backhanders everywhere hasn't there and it's just like the film layer cake you know there are criminals on all levels of this cake or this tier of cakes and um, you know you get crooks dealing with millions and billions of pounds at the top of the tier on the very last top of the tier of the cake just as much as you do um, on the street level, with the guy that probably, you know, bobs um, a, a point of milk for himself uh, without paying for it. You know, it's his perks of his job. So, yeah, it's rife and it's everywhere. And so long as it continues, and so long as people, you know, um, don't look outside their own life, it's going to continue to get worse and worse and worse. You know, that is inevitable. That's like thinking logically about this. And, you know, there's a lot of people like myself that have realised this. It, like I say, it's not just um, the financial climate. It is literally the global climate, the temperature climate. It is uh, one step away from sparking the Third World War. And only this time round, we've got thermonuclear weapons it's one step away from, you know, enslavement. I mean, we're seeing them chip away at freedoms and, um, you know, human rights. It's, it's across every scale. And with that attitude of, you know, being numb to, um, there's a, a word that describes it, you know, um, where someone's cold, um, and they don't seem to care. Uh, they've got no emotion um, to suffering. Uh, you know, with that, with that attitude increasing, this is going to become a hell upon earth. It really is. And uh, you know, I, I really don't care. You know, people can say, oh, you, you know, you, you've talked about the Bible, you've talked about science, and you know, the two don't mix. I don't care. I really don't care. 
you know, I, I'm a witness and I've seen, not a Jehovah's Witness, I've just witnessed what I've saw, you know, and I've got a little foundation on YouTube, uh, a very unique channel where sometimes, you know, I talk about these things. It's been a long time since I've really, you know, talked about how I feel about these things with, with people. And I, I can guarantee you that there's a lot of people that completely understand where I'm coming from, you know, with what I'm talking about and can see it. And they're probably like myself. They're not just concerned. They're actually a little bit worried and maybe even a little bit frightened about the outcome of the future. And so we should be. Because just look at the state of play of things across many ranges across many obstacles in that gauntlet that, you know, humanity doesn't appear to be looking like this time round it's going to get through. And I say this time round is because I'm a believer that there has been probably four, maybe this is the fifth generation of advanced civilised beings on this planet. Yeah, I know there's not a lot of evidence of that. Well, if you just look at how we evolved into technology, well, they would have done the exact same thing. Maybe they had greater technologies than us, different cultures than us. But, you know, you can understand that that would be the case. Only just looking at our world, you know, um, you know, uh, the Western culture is completely different to the Eastern culture. There's nothing wrong with different cultures at all. You know, they are very interesting, I find. You know, I'm glad that we do have so many different cultures. I'm glad we do have so many religions in this world because it would be boring if we looked out the window and saw just a rainbow of consisting one colour. You know, this gives us definition to, you know, the world. But, uh, you know, it's sad to see it, you know, all being pulled apart through illogical reasoning and actions and behaviour. I'm going to leave it here, guys. You know, I, I mean, just continue um, observing, you know, the way things are going with me, and you'll find that I'm probably not far too, uh, too far from the truth of what I've talked about in this uh, video here. And um, you know, I'd like to make more videos like this because I can hear people's minds ticking right now, saying, you know. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, I can agree with that. And, you know, you know, it's not just me. Uh, I'm just fortunate to talk to a lot of people, you know, that think along the same lines as me. So, you know, um, I apologise for the, the, the length of this video, you know, and um, there's a lot more uh, subjects I'd like to talk about along these levels. But I've found generally... People do prefer to listen to, you know, pulse shift news and get the data. So recently, for the last six, seven months, that's what I've been doing. But, you know, sometimes you've got to just throw in one of these videos, I feel. Um, so I'm going to leave it here, guys. Uh, you know, give me your thoughts in the comment section. And, uh, you know, um, in the next few days or so, um, I'll put up a video. Uh, with data on the pole shift, you know, and bringing it up to the current, you know, um, part of where we are, you know, with all uh, the relevant um, information that, you know, if you're new to this channel, you're probably wondering where it is, you know, or try and include it in that video. But there are videos that I've covered with that same data. So, you know, if you want to go back to that, we'll just, all we're going to be doing in the next video is just talking a little bit more about that, so I'm going to leave it here guys, um, there's a link down there if you want to support this channel, it's not just the channel you support, we've got a website dedicated to the pole shift news, and um, you know, like I say, you might be that one person uh, that always supports this videos and uh, content and research etc, and if you are you know, I want to thank you very much it's nice to know that you're not on your own uh, and that there are other people, you know, prepared to say, look, move aside a little bit and let us help you push this cart. You know, maybe uh, sometimes we get 
you know information to people that um, benefit it from benefit from it more than some others do and uh, if if that is the case then you know it's worth it I feel so um, you know enjoy the rest of your weekend guys and I'll catch up with you uh, in a few days or so link down below and as always bye for now